Hi, my name is Andrew Bruner. I'm a leukemia specialist here at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, and I focus in MDS. And I was asked a question about high-risk MDS. Specifically, when you have a high-risk MDS patient um, who's not fit for transplant and even not potentially fit for chemotherapy, um, how do we treat them? And I, I think that's... Uh, Good question. It's a challenging population. Um, patients with MDS in general are older. Uh, many of them will have a number of comorbidities. Um, transplant is a moving target these days. And so uh, with the development of better supportive care, um, non-myeloblative conditioning regimens, we can transplant patients um, even well into their 70s. Um, but for many patients, that may not be an option overall. Azacitidine or decidabine are the standard therapies for high-risk MDS patients. And in general, they can be administered to almost all patients, um, uh, even with some dose reductions if needed. Uh, most patients can uh, tolerate uh, hypomethylating agent therapy um, and uh, just need more active, supportive uh, care with transfusions and uh, management of infectious issues if they arise. That said, there are a few patients for whom even uh, gentle chemotherapy is like azacitidine or decitabine can seem uh, uh, too challenging or um, may not be something you want to administer right away. Um, in that case, it's, it's a tough clinical situation. I think um, you have transfusion support uh, for patients. Um, many of these patients, you know, their issue is pancytopenia. And so being able to support them with uh, treating an infection with antibiotics and treating them with best supportive care with transfusion support, platelet support can be helpful. There are patients for whom, although you don't feel like they can tolerate uh, hypomethylating agent therapy, you may consider uh, therapies borrowed from lower risk disease. I think it's always worth having a frank discussion with the patients that, you know, unfortunately, many of our therapies, such as growth factor support with uh, ESAs like Aranesp or Procrit um, or Redicrit, um, are less likely to work in patients with high risk disease. Similarly, um, some of the agents that we use for platelets, um, like the TPO mimetics and low risk uh, MDS, um, they can have challenges, especially in patients who have already got increased blasts. Blasts, I tend to avoid them. Um, but often we're borrowing some of those therapies. Uh, new uh, approvals for uh, loose patercept um, may suggest uh, the option of using that in some select patients, uh, you know, patients with ring blast that might have um, uh, other cytopenias or something else that pushes them toward high risk, but for whom you don't think they can quite tolerate a hypomethylating agent. Um, and so there's, I would say, no uh, great standard um, for this uh, small subgroup of patients. I usually, if I encounter someone where I'm, I actually am really worried about their ability to tolerate um, even reduced dose azacitidine, I usually give them some time on supportive care, get to know their disease trajectory, and also just get to know their functional status a little bit better. Um, and then based on that, make a decision I would say most of the patients that I initially was worried about, I can get on some degree of hypomethylating agent therapy um, uh, if they uh, stay stable long enough. Um, but I, I do think that, uh, you know, this is an unmet need in MDS. We, we still have um, many patients for whom we don't have a good, uh, really low toxicity um, regimen. Um, there's an occasional patient who has an IDH1 or IDH2 mutation, and that, that can be a nice uh, targeted option, but we're in need of better targeted therapies um, that address the larger population of MDS uh, patients where mutations are more frequently seen in uh, epigenetic modifiers such as TET2, DNMT3A, or in splicing factors um, like SF3B1, SRSF2, and U2AF1. So I really hope that over the next five years, we're able to find uh, better targeted therapies that do offer kind of this uh, sweet spot of low toxicity, but some efficacy for patients who you're not able to get standard care.